Welcome to Rider Forge. This is Dr. Will speaking. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. If you want to help support what I'm doing, consider picking up a slick Rider Forge t-shirt or sticker. The link is in the description. In this video, we're going to cover the parts on and around the engine of a street motorcycle. I'm assuming you don't have any previous experience or knowledge. Please see my other videos if you'd like some additional background. Now, without further delay, let's get into it. engine and the fuel system of the motorcycle in this video. Let's jump on in, grab a pen and start drawing so you can follow along with me. Let's just trace the path here. You're going to put gas in the gas cap. It's going to go in the gas tank. This is then going to feed down to your fuel injection system or your carburetor, depending on what kind of motorcycle you have. This is either going to be fed actively or passively. If it's actively fed, you probably have a fuel pump. If it's passively fed, you probably have a valve system called a petcock. This feeds in to the intake area here, which is a, a car, again a carburetor or a fuel injection system. It then mixes with air, it gets sent inside the engine, an explosion happens, pressure gets built up, and then that drives power through the engine. Your exhaust is going to come out the headers and out the mufflers. Behind here is a air filter, or the air filter system is somewhere in here. Okay, you're going to have an air box and an air filter. The other thing we're going to look at is the front sprocket. This is how the chain on this motorcycle connects to the rear wheel. This is how the engine drives the rear wheel. It's connected right here behind this hidden system. There are other systems available such as a shaft drive or a belt drive, but we're going to look at the chain in this video as it's probably the most common setup. The transmission for the bike in the bottom end of the engine is right here. This is what's called the top end of the engine. This is where the pistons and the cams are. We're not going to get too technical, just being aware what things are called. Now if we're to look at this from the other side, the only major difference we see is this funny looking doohickey here, and you won't see this on most motorcycles. I think this is unique to this brand. This is probably how oil is getting pumped up from the bottom of the engine to the top of the engine. If your bike is what's called liquid cooled, you might have a coolant tank somewhere hidden behind some plastics or it may be more exposed depending on the style of your motorcycle. All you're really going to need to worry about here is making sure the level is topped off as a, a personal maintenance item. So let's look at your minimum responsibility as a motorcycle rider. Like what do you really need to do? Your, your minimum responsibilities as far as the engine goes are all passive. That is, you know, there are a lot of those jobs can be done by a mechanic or a dealership if you want, okay? But there are certain items that you have to do yourself that you don't have an option really. It's just required. So the things we're going to look at, they're all observations when it comes to the engine is watching out for the oil level, watching out for the coolant level. If you have a coolant system, if you have a liquid cooled motorcycle, looking at the sprocket and chain for wear. And let's, let's highlight some of those items by looking at them on the, the engine and find where they are. So again, the sprocket, the front sprocket is behind this cover here. So this cover comes off with screws. You might be able to see through it. In this instance, we can see that it has a nice window. A lot of motorcycles don't have a window, so you can see in there. So you might need to remove this with a couple of screws. Really what you're looking for is excessive wear. Um, when the chain or the sprocket is worn out past a certain level, you simply replace them, okay? There's more detail uh, on the rear section video that I created already if you want to know more about the chain and the sprocket systems. Okay, but that's your maintenance item there. You're just observing that, all right? This is not a liquid-cooled motorcycle. So this is an oil-cooled motorcycle, and because of that, there's no radiator. Uh, a bike that's liquid-cooled is going to have a radiator somewhere around here, and it's going to have that overflow tank. The overflow tank is often on the right-hand side, so let's go to the next one. If there was an overflow tank, again, I'm drawing the position of where a radiator would be. The overflow tank is usually somewhere around here and you're just going to want to keep that up to uh, the maximum level with coolant. Okay, there's going to be lines on it. It's usually here, usually hidden away. All right. The other thing we're going to look at, of course, is that oil level and that is checked right there. Can you see that little spy glass in there? There's a little glass window and it's got lines on the side of it and it has a maximum and a minimum oil level. That's really how you want to keep your oil level. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail on how to check this. I'll do that in other videos, but suffice it to say the bike needs to be perfectly upright or on the side stand depending on the model. So this is something you need to check in your owner's manual. Um, people get this wrong all the time. So you check your owner's manual. Your owner's manual is going to tell you how to position the motorcycle. Should it be leaned over on the side stand or should it be standing straight up and down? That's really important to get correct because if you get it wrong, it's going to make it seem as though you don't have enough oil in the system. If you can see 
oil in here when the bike is vertical it's probably fine but again check your manual to make sure you're actually reading it correctly that's the most important thing you can do for your bike for maintenance purposes anyway the other thing again because we're around here is just take a look at the rear brake <laughs> rather the rear brake fluid reservoir make sure that rear brake my god I can't say this correctly the other thing we're gonna do is ensure that the rear brake fluid is filled adequately and you can check out the color and make sure the consistency looks okay it's not gotten too dark or anything like that again the purpose here is to become comfortable with the different parts on the motorcycle to become competent to learn what our minimum responsibility is to be a good safe motorcycle rider we don't have to be a mechanic if we don't want to be there's a lot of that stuff can be done by a dealership or another person but there is a minimum level of responsibility that you need to be aware of and i think i've highlighted those um, and again check your owner's manual for any additional information and with that we will end this video Please take a look at the entire beginner playlist if you'd like to learn more. The best way to stay informed and find out when I release new videos is by subscribing and hitting the bell notification. If you like the video, hit the thumbs up. If you want to help support what I'm doing, consider picking up some merch. I really appreciate it and the feedback. Do you have a specific question or request? Let me know about it in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer it. You never know, I might even make a video on it. Until next time, this is Dr. Will with Rider Forge. I'm out of here.